engine three, engine four, tower two, truck 14. Respond on a reported multifamily residential structure fire. Fighting fire in a multi-story building, it can be challenging. Crews are dealing with multiple levels, dozens of rooms, and the possibility that people might be inside. Dick, go to the left. Hey, my buddy, he's in the last room on the right. That's right. The last room on the right. That's why our recruit class is learning the skills and techniques, what it takes to fight fire in a building like this. The details on what they're learning here and a look at what's happening around the district in this West Metro update. Jeff, call 911. What is the address of the emergency? Engine four en route. A structure fire on the second floor of an apartment building. Be advised we have multiple 911 callers, reports of parties trapped. With possible victims trapped, unable to escape. It's a challenging drill for these West Metro recruits, putting together a number of skills that they've been learning during this 16-week academy. We uh, simulated fire outside of the structure that they would hit with a hose stream prior to entering. They'd be met with a body of fire outside. They would hit that and then advance inside to search for victims. The recruits are in their final few weeks of training. They'll be graduating on December 12th and then out working in the district around the first of the year. And so our goal, obviously, uh, is to train them, get them ready so that when they go out to serve the citizens of our community, they're ready to do so. Across the district over the past month, West Metro crews responded to several structure fires. One was a fatal fire. This is what the first arriving crews saw at the Tiffany Square Apartments shortly after 4.15 a.m. on Halloween. A large section of the apartment building was fully involved. Two people trapped by the flames died in a second story unit. This video from a camera on 6th Avenue shows how quickly the fire progressed. Two juveniles have been arrested and are facing first degree murder and arson charges. In all, 10 people were injured, three were taken to the hospital. A fire in a trailer home near 16th and Depew Street. The structure was fully involved when crews arrived on scene. Firefighters were able to contain the fire to one home despite close proximity to adjacent homes in the trailer park. Our investigator determined that the fire was caused by an oxygen concentrator that was plugged into an extension cord which overheated and ignited. For your safety, it's recommended that oxygen concentrators be plugged directly into a wall socket. This was a small vegetation fire, but it put up a good deal of smoke in the area just north and east of Hamden and Kipling. Crews made quick work of the fire around the pool and an apartment complex. There were no injuries and no structures were threatened. These types of evergreen bushes, also known as junipers, are among the least fire-resistant plants that you can use in your landscape. This video from a fire in July shows why. The plant burns quickly because it contains flammable oils. If you have these bushes in your yard and especially around your foundation, it's recommended that you remove them. Just about half of West Metro's district is in what we call the wildland urban interface, basically where neighborhoods back up to open space or to parks. Accessing off the surface road. Because wildfire is a real risk in these areas, our crews often train in wildland fire tactics and strategies. Part of the strategy is knowing the terrain and the types of fuel or vegetation that pose the biggest threat. Much of the fuel in our district is grass and small brush, and if a fire ignites in those fuels in windy conditions, it can grow quickly. 
The key to keeping a fire small is getting the right amount of resources on the fire line and training crews to help them recognize and overcome the challenges of an interface fire while protecting homes and other structures. Like most fire districts, medical emergencies make up the majority of West Metro's calls, and across the district, we're seeing an increase in the number of drug overdoses. Across Colorado, the rate of drug overdose deaths has doubled over the past four years. Knowing the signs and symptoms of an overdose and how to administer Narcan can help save lives, and it's easier than you think. See how in this video from West Metro and Centura Health. Numbers from the state's Department of Public Health tell an alarming story. 911, what is your office of your emergency? Coming upon somebody who has overdosed is scary and intimidating. I was just so freaked out and worried for my friend. Their breathing is real slow and labored. Their pupils are small. We tried waking her up and that didn't really work. Understanding though that you are the person they need in that situation with Narcan is so important. I just said we have to call 911 and so they all ran away and like hid. You can save a life. Yo, I've never been in a fire house. No, I haven't either. There was a student at my high school this year who unfortunately did pass away, so it hit our community pretty hard. A lot of those street drugs, you just don't know what you're taking. Can you show us how we're supposed to respond if someone is overdosing? I'll be the patient. 911, what is the address of the emergency? If you think someone's overdosing, call 911 right away. That's always going to be number one. And you want to lift this arm up over top of her head. Put that arm over across her chest. Bring that knee up and lay it across and then just push on the hips and shoulders. Once you have her in position, uh, if you do happen to have Narcan, go ahead and administer that. The Narcan's gonna come in a box. It's gonna be set up similar to this. Have a syringe with the drug inside of it, and then this will go in the nostril. We'll get it in her nostril here, and then I'll have you kind of take it, and then you can go ahead and push it, and that's it. That's all you do. That's actually easier than I thought it would. Yeah. You will never be in trouble or look down upon for helping someone you love or a member of your community. You're not going to hurt somebody by giving them Narcan. And recovery is absolutely possible. My last overdose was the scariest for me. I was with three people who I considered friends um, and they left me. But something clicked at that moment, like I'm here for a reason. Today I'm a counselor. Today I get to meet with people every day and I get to help people on their journey to recovery. If it weren't for that stranger, I wouldn't be here. And after we administer, we're just gonna keep her in that position until responders show up. By responding with Narcan, that takes somebody that is likely on their way to significant brain injury and death. And within minutes, they're up and awake and talking. Okay. <laughs> Everyone has the opportunity to do that. Like everything else in the fire service, the apparatus we use has changed over the years. And when West Metro orders a new engine, a new truck, a new tower, or a new ambulance, it's customized for the crews that will use it. 
So it's an honor for me to be able to follow in. Our newest fire engine is Engine 12, and we welcomed it to the fleet with a ceremonial christening. First, a bucket of water from the old engine was carried to the new one and then poured into the tank. Then the new engine got a wash down and dry, both signifying the passing of the old engine to the new. We've also just put a new brush truck into service, Brush 9. Built on a Ford 550 chassis, the truck has a 300-gallon water tank and is assigned to our Station 9. On order, a second brush truck currently in production. This will be Brush 4 and assigned to West Metro Station 4. Delivery date is sometime after the first of the year. And we're also expecting our first tender by the end of this year. This is tender six and will run out of our station six. The apparatus holds 2,000 gallons of water and will be a valuable resource in the areas of our district where a water source is not immediately available. Whenever we take delivery on any new apparatus, it spends about a week at our fleet facility. Mechanics install a computer system, radios, and headsets. And every compartment is filled with equipment. We receive the new apparatus from Pierce. We're in charge of mounting the equipment. Um, every truck is a little different, so we cater towards each station and their needs. And we do a, a pump test and check all the lights and make sure everything is operational before it does go to the station. Every inch of the apparatus is used to mount a piece of equipment for the firefighters or a piece of equipment used to run the truck. So if you open every little nook and cranny of that truck, you're gonna find something. A brand new apparatus like an engine will spend about 15 years on the front line and then about five years in reserve status, so basically a 20-year lifespan. And finally, an early morning wake-up call courtesy of a geyser from a water main break. West Metro Truck 14 responded to the scene in the 7600 block of Sunshine Peak around 6.15 a.m. on a Saturday morning. There was minimal damage to the home. However, chunks of pavement and rocks thrown up by the geyser damaged three vehicles sitting close by. And that's just a quick look at some of the things that are going on here around West Metro. For more information on the fire district or to get safety tips for home or work, visit our website, westmetrofire.org. And for breaking news and information, follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube.